This is the Hyundai Ioniq 6, and it is the South Korean motor manufacturer's second foray into the all electric market. The first car they produced was the Ioniq 5, but it looked nothing like this car whatsoever. It's an SUV, it's big, it's chunky, whereas this, the Ioniq 6, is much more smoother, it's more saloon style, or as the Americans put it, it's more of a sedan. It is a very good looking car and that, you know, shows in some of the awards that this car has won because it's won Design of the Year Award for 2023. It's also won Best Electric Car of 2023 and most impressively, for me anyway, was the fact that it's won World Car of the Year Award 2023. It's simply incredible. I mean, the car was launched back in 2022 and it gets its name from what we call a portmanteau, which is when you take two words and create a new word out of it. And the two words that Hyundai used were ion and unique. Yeah, I couldn't quite work that one out. But nevertheless, it's come up with Ioniq. There you go. It's a great car, but we need to get around it, have a look at it, and suss it out, as I like to say here in the UK. You're watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. If you've never seen what we do before, then for the next minute and a half, feast your eyes on our little trailer, and I'll catch up with you straight afterwards with the full review on Hyundai's new electric car offering. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. Ioniq 6s come in two different trim levels. Entry level car is called the Premium, and that will set you back from 47,000 UK pounds here in the UK, obviously. Um, if you want to go for top of the range or kitchen sink level, as I like to call it, um, that's called the Ultimate, and that will set you back from 50,000 UK pounds. But you do get a number of extra bits and pieces with that. We'll discuss that later on in the review. Cars available in 11 different colours, which is a good range of colours. Five of those are included in your price, whether you go for the premium or the ultimate. However, the other six are an extra 685 to 885 UK pounds. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing. Now let's take a look what you get with your entry level car. Entry level cars or premium Ionic 6s come with a full set of LED headlights. They also have the auto dip beam built into them as well, that's included. Um, you will also notice the LED running lights and they're little cubes. They look really lovely at night and that's mirrored round at the back where you get a full set of LEDs at the back as well. 20 inch rims. Oh yes guys, check them out. How nice are they? And that goes for the same for the Ultimate as well. So 20 inch rims as standard on this car. Foldy any mirrors that heat up in the winter. These ones are the camera ones. Not over keen on them. They're an extra 996 UK pounds. Um, can't see the point. I'd rather just have the normal mirror because either way, you're going to have this stuck out here and it's going to get hit or you're going to break it parking if you were going to break it. So it doesn't really make a lot of difference. I like the idea, but I think it's got to be where there's nothing on the outside and the mirrors are on the inside and then it gives it a nice clean look as well. 
sadly not the case here. Rain sensitive wipers and you will get a 360 degree camera and some beepers front and rear. And just to finish it all off, round at the back here, you'll get some nice privacy glass all included. So, so far on the outside for your entry level car, it's starting to stack up. But now let's check inside and see all the other lovely bits and pieces that you're going to get as the driver. So here we are up front in the Ionic 6 and even on your entry level car you're going to be getting keyless entry and keyless ignition. Um, Ultima and entry both get that and it's a proximity key so as soon as you get near the car little door handles pop out and you can get easy access in and out of the car but you've got to have the key in your pocket. Um, you can also manoeuvre the car with this key as well. Um, we've demonstrated that on previous cars with Hyundai. It's quite a standard thing these days. If you get caught into a parking space you just use the key to manipulate the car forwards or backwards and then that's if someone's parked really tight next to you. Very handy little key that. I'm going to put it out the way in the double cup holder there in the centre. Okay first up the thing you're going to notice most of all about this car is its design. I mean, it's won awards for its design and it is simply incredible. Uh, the minimalist sort of features in this car. I love the futuristic look of the car. You've got this beautiful accent. You can change the colors on these uh, little accent lights that run all the way around. At night, this car just simply looks stunning, beautiful. You've got a 12.3 inch TFT touchscreen there. Then you've got a 12.3 cluster here combined to produce this one sort of big screen right the way across. It's so easy to use, it's beautiful. There's a lot going on, but it really is easy to use. Um, you've got the dual zone uh, air climate control there. That comes with the premium and the ultimate. So you've got that. You've got the wireless charging for your phone in there as well. That comes as standard with the entry level car. Uh, your windows are in the center here. There's an auto hold button here. I just mentioned what that, well, if you go through a car wash, guys, trust me from experience, make sure that's off. Um, as you go through the car wash, especially the one that grabs the wheels and takes you through, if that's not off, it causes all sorts of pandemonium, which I can assure you don't want to experience. So make sure that's off. Uh, regular run of the mill driving, use the auto hold because if you're on a hill, don't want it to roll back in any way. Uh, you get a USB over there and then there's another double USB-C power point inside here as well. And a nice little glove box, you get quite a few bits and pieces in there. Um, but like I say, it's it's just the design of this car is just simply beautiful. Uh, driver aids, all on the left-hand side of the car. When I mean driver aids, you get cruise control, you get lane keeper, you get distance control, you've got a speed limiter, lane departure, warning, you've got a tyre pressure monitor, there's everything, even on the entry-level car. With the standard entry-level car and the standard mirrors, you will get blind spot detection as well, just to mention that. I know this car's got the internal mirrors with the cameras, which I don't like that much, uh, but you will get the blind spot mirrors built in into your standard mirrors if you go for the entry level car. Um, you get uh, Bluetooth and you will get Android mirroring and you will get Apple Play as standard wireless on all that as well. So you don't need to plug anything in. It's all there, really nice and easy to use. You've got your tunes, you've got a DAB radio that's built into this. The sound system is simply fantastic. It's a Bose sound system. Um, I've had it set up in the car with my, um, with my tunes running off my phone. It's it just simply mind-blowing how good it is in here. Um, loving the setup, loads of stuff that you get as standard. You've got the heated steering wheel as well, almost forgot to mention that. Nice heated steering wheel for in the winter. You've got heated and cooled seats, must mention that. So uh, in the, you, you can set it up on your screen here. Once you get in the car, you can just set that up in the winter, get the, get the heat coming through, or in the summer like now, you can have a nice cold rear end. That's what we love. Um, all in all though, guys, what a car. What a, what value for money at 47 grand for, a, for an entry level car. You're getting an awful lot of bang for your buck. Let's check out under the bonnet for the different motor and battery configurations on the Ionic 6. The bonnet release catches down there in the driver's footwell. Single pull, nice and easy. Don't forget if it's a left hand drive car, it's gonna be in the passenger footwell. They're not gonna swap it around guys. Costs too much money. Uh, the actual bonnet release catch itself is in the middle there. Use the Hyundai badge as a direction. Put your index finger in and pull it quite hard over to the left and then let the gas trucks do the work. This car is available in two variations. That's all wheel drive and rear wheel drive. And that will depend on which one you go for when it comes to the setup on this car. 77 kilowatt battery, no matter what you go for. So that's the size of your battery and that has kind of dictate the range. And then the number of motors as in all wheel drive or rear wheel drive as in one motor will depend on the range itself. So if you go for rear wheel drive, that will give you 168 kilowatt motor single motor on the back there uh, it's the equivalent of around about 228 brake horsepower 
just to put it into combustion engine terms. Now that will give you a range, a good range of around 338 miles. And then we jump up, if you want to go for the all-wheel drive version, still a 77 kilowatt battery, but now you're getting two motors with a total of 239 kilowatts. So it's jumped up, and but uh, yeah, sorry, equivalent of that is 325 brake horsepower. I have to do the math on that. So you've got 325 brake now, but you've got all-wheel drive. But where you will suffer with that is, although you've got the all-wheel drive system, you suffer with the mileage because you've got two motors drawing off that 77 kilowatt battery. So now you're only going to get around 322 miles of range. And there you have it, just two nice, simple, easy options to choose from with the Ionic 6. I like the design of this car from the back. There's quite a few people that I've bumped into that don't. But we'll take it as it's a Marmite car from behind. I think it's lovely. I love all this aero that's going on here. You've got this massive array of LEDs that run all the way around. They mimic the front as well, little cubes all the way around there. It's really good looking. Obviously there is no fake exhaust or anything like that, but just a generally really nice shape. I love the sloping back on this. It almost makes you feel like it's gonna be a hatchback. Um, it reminds me a little bit of back in the day when I was young of a Sierra, you know, like a Cosworth or something. It had the big tail at the back there. Um, so I do like what's going on. You've got DAB radar up there. You've got that privacy glass on the back here, all is standard. Now to open the boot, um, it's obviously electronically assistive. Um, you push a little button there like that and it will do its job. Check that out. Now it's actually a boot. So it's, it's not that, you know, as you expected it to go up, which is what I did. Um, it's around 400 liters though. And because of the shape of it, you can get quite a lot in there because it sort of goes at a rake there, but there is quite a lip inside there. There's no boot space underneath so you can't get anything underneath there is however we've got some charging cables there for when you do need a set of charging cables occasionally you do um, underneath here there's a pannier and inside is unfortunately the the spare tire kit you know the pump and the latex and stuff that you get um, to be honest throw it away and just get run flats for this car. There's nowhere you can put a spare wheel on this car, but get a set of run flats because trust me, that latex liquid that you pump in there and the pump and all that, it's not gonna work. I've been stuck two, three times now in certain instances where I, it's just useless and it ruins the tire as well. You have to throw the tire away and get a brand new tire. In most cases, you can actually repair a puncture. So just bear that in mind. Uh, I did mention about the cables in here, uh, set of cables for when, as and when, if you're out on the road or if you need to plug into say, a mains on a house for that little trickle charge if you're around at a friend's house or somewhere a few hours and just give it a little trickle charge uh, but all in yeah 400 litres of boot space it's not the biggest but at the end of the day it's still practical you're going to get a number of suitcases you could probably get about four or five carry-on suitcases in there quite easily um, you do get believe it or not a 60 40 split on the seat as well so you can put the seats down and then you can get larger items slide them all the way through but you're going to be limited to the height here as to what you can get in this gap here so just bear that in mind but you know it's not designed like an suv this car it's designed as a saloon car so it's got it's got its practical side as well has the ionic 6. So in the back for the passengers, um, I think anybody you give a lift to in this car, including your kids, are going to be absolutely amazed at the space in here. It's huge. You can easily get three people across here. And the comfort of the seats. However, there's always a however. There's no leg room. It's got no, no, nowhere to put your feet. <laughs> You can't put them under the seat. I was really shocked at that. So it means you've got to sit like that all the way. You can't actually move your feet out. I mean, there is distance there, admittedly, but I like to get my feet under the seat sometimes. Um, another little thing, Granny's fishnet stockings here. I mean, it would have been nice to have seen something created on the back of the seat to hold your peripheral, you know, your iPads or whatever you're putting down. A Granny's fishnet stockings are not really my cup of tea, and I think they're very old fashioned. So I'm a little bit disappointed that a car of this sort of very modern magnitude comes with those. Also, another very disappointing thing I've noticed in the back here, um, there's no air climate control. I would have thought this is quite a premium car. We would have had tri-zone climate control in this car. Well, you've got independent heating and cooling in the back here, but all you've got are two vents and you know, you can only direct them. You can't even turn them off or on. 
So it's all down to your uh, driver or your passenger to set that up. Um, you do get a couple of USB-Cs in the back here, so you can charge your bits up. That's going to keep the kids happy. You've got a couple of kids in the back here that need to charge. So there's two USBs there. But getting back to the kid thing again, um, on the side of the seat here, the passenger seat, you can actually manoeuvre that seat from the back here. I can see on a long journey, kids getting bored, pushing you know backwards and forwards with the seat, annoying mum or dad or whatever. Yeah, I could see that happening all day long. I think I'd want mine supplied without those buttons on the side there until, until I got kids who are a little bit older. Um, but generally all round, massive great window, single piece window here, got that privacy glass going on as well. It's a lovely size. If you suffer from car sickness in the back of this car, that window is really, really gonna help and it comes all the way down as well. I love that. Um, let's have a look around the car itself. So you've got recessed seat belts here, you've got a really nice premium finish as well. I love that. It's a wipe friendly finish as well. So obviously it is, you know, looking towards kid friendly or whatever. Um, you've got Isofix points either side there, but they don't have all the plastic bits they are literally just tucked away inside this just pointing out where those isofix points are a little badge on the seat there in the center here get a lovely armrest with a double cup holder and don't forget as i mentioned when i was round in the boot these seats are 60 40 split so they do come down so if you've got longer items that you need to get through here like a decent piece of wood from the uh, from the uh, DIY store here in the UK, I will mention that. Um, because don't forget, at the end of the day, if you can get your wood in the back of the car here, it's gonna become a very useful car and you can sell that to your partner and say, well, I can still go down the DIY store and get lumps of wood or whatever, lengths of wood. Um, joking apart, really nice. You've got, um, LED courtesy light in here. There's another little uh, place to hang bits and pieces up from there as well. Um, and I think generally, although those little bits and pieces I've mentioned, generally, it's a really nice, comfortable place to sit. Once you get the Ionic 6 out on the road, I think you will begin immediately to appreciate the build quality in this car. It is absolutely incredible. For instance, the soundproofing, the acoustics in this car, it's brilliant, the glass is super quiet and you will notice you won't get any wind noise and you won't get any feedback from the road either. Now usually when you're in an electric car, because there's no combustion engine making a noise or transmission, you know, all stuff like that, it's not that you're used to, you tend when you first get into an electric car, you go, oh, isn't it quiet? And then you start, oh, I can hear the wind and I can hear the road noise feedback. But even with those 20 inch rims on this car, that it comes as standard with, it's so super, super quiet. I love this peripheral vision all the way around, really nice. Not over keen on the mirrors, I mentioned that. Internal mirrors, can't see the point, point in spending an extra thousand pounds, you know, thousand UK pounds on a set of internal mirrors when you've got a big stick stuck out there anyway. If you could do away with that and it would make it, you know, visibly much nicer, more aesthetically pleasing, um, and also less chance of parking and cracking one or someone knocking one, I might, you know, I might actually think about spending an extra thousand pounds. But apart from that, you're so used to using a mirror, you tend to look at the camera all the time. You don't actually look at the mirror, which isn't a good thing when you're on a roundabout, for example. So I'm just struggling a, a little bit with that. Um, main rivals with this car, well, really, I suppose it's it's the obvious ones. Uh, premium electric saloons. Um, Model 3 from Tesla, it's got to be, hasn't it? Uh, BMW i4 and definitely the Polestar 2, and they're all within the same sort of price range. Um, this one does very well with its uh, distance, with its range. Uh, we'll talk about that in the economy bit of this, uh, bit, this section in a couple of minutes. Um, so, yeah, rivals are there. Uh, Price-wise, the only thing that I've noticed recently is Tesla had a price drop with the Model 3, uh, which has put it down to around about 43,000 UK pounds, which does bring it in quite a bit cheaper than the other cars. But to be honest, do you want to spend, you know, I would rather spend a little bit more money and get something a little bit classier, shall we say, something with a bit more background to it. Um, I just feel a bit more comfortable with a manufacturer that's been around a bit, you know, and produces a number of different cars, not just electric cars, for example. Um, but that's a personal opinion at the end of the day. Let's talk about the driving aspect of this car, because I think that's what's probably the most important part of, of owning an electric car, is having that really nice experience of, of the drive of the car. Um, first up, you get four different driving modes. The driving modes are accessed down here. It says drive mode quite clearly there. Um, when you push it, you'll notice it'll come up in the eco mode. That's what I'm currently driving in. Um, you've then got a normal mode, 
Um, and then on top of that, oh, Eco obviously is going to give you the most mileage you're going to get, the most range. Um, Sport is your next one up after the normal. Sport will give you your biggest bang for your buck with the power. Um, and I'll give you an idea now. You, <laughs> this car absolutely flies, as you would expect with any electric car. There's no transmission. It's, it's just all power going down. Um, Nought to 60 times on the, um, on the rear wheel version of this car is a very sort of acceptable seven seconds. However, once you go into the twin motors, you do lose a little bit on the range, but you do get a naught to 60 time of around five seconds. Again, I'm gonna mention it's not quite as fast as the Tesla, but I think Tesla sort of put all its efforts into naught to 60 times, which can't see the point really. Um, what I'm more interested in is probably the range. Tesla, Tesla does have that range, but, you know, the others not really competing as much as this car has. I think this car is, is nailing it a little bit with the range. So let's talk about the range and let's talk about a little bit about the, the charging. Oh, there was one other mode I didn't mention and that was snow mode. So if you click down and you hold down, you'll go into snow mode. Now snow mode is for extra slippery surfaces and it will give you that added grip as well. And it will keep the gearing down and go, well, keep the, the motor held back a bit, so to speak. So you don't put your foot down and you know you start spinning all the wheels. So that's the idea behind it. I haven't tried it. It's the middle of the summer here in the UK when we're reviewing this car. It's gonna be unlikely I'm gonna hit any snow and ice. Mind you saying that, British summers, not that unlikely. So if we do get any snow and ice in an August afternoon, I'll get out and give it a test for you. Um, anyway, in the meantime, let's get back to the economy side of this car. So overall average, we have been getting around about three and a half miles um, per kilowatt. Now, when you're, when you're charging up this battery, it's going to it's going to give you a, a good charge on this battery. You've got a 225 kilowatt charging capability, which, believe it or not, is very good. It's much better than a couple of the others aforementioned manufacturers. Um, so you can, if you can find the right charger, charge this from about 10% to 80% on a 225 in probably around 20, 18, 20 minutes. So we put it to the test the other day. We took this car into a local BP station. Um, I will mention it's quite expensive to charge on the road. It's around about 84 pence per kilowatt. I'll mention that, which if you work out three and a half miles is around about, um, well, if it's per kilowatt and we're getting three miles, so it's, you know, divide that's around about 28, 20, 20, 27, 28 pence per mile. So I will mention that. It's better off charging at home. Get yourself a home charger. When you buy one of these, you're obviously going to invest in a home charger. That initial investment is well worth it, trust me, uh, because this will charge overnight. You can just stick it back on and it will keep topping up and that would be far more reasonable. I think um, you get a rate, you know, a reasonable rate on a home charge is probably around about 38 to 43 pence per unit, depending on which provider you're with. But it is going up all the time, so you do need to keep an eye on that. So anyway, I'm getting back to the charging. You can do, you know, you can get it sub 20 minutes um, on an 80% on an charge. So the other day we went to the BP and uh, instantly we had um, a bit of an issue because there were a couple of cars there, so we had to wait. Uh, but I'm not including the wait time in the charge time. I think that's totally unfair. When we did get on the charger, it all worked fine. Uh, you've got to have a BP account, but you can pay tap and go with a card as well. So that's quite handy. Um, managed to log on all fine, got it all you know hooked up and going. Now, what I want to mention is when you go on these chargers, we went on a 150 kilowatt charger, which is pretty good but you don't actually get 150 kilowatts. It says it can do up to 150 kilowatts. It's quite clever because it'll bait you in on that. It's almost like click baiting you in. But you will only get what is available at the time. Now, what I mean at the time, so if there's three or four charging units and there's four cars on there, you're all sort of sharing that electricity, that power output, and it can't churn out the full 150 bucks all at the same time, so to speak. So you have to, you know, you have to bear this in mind. When you pull up on a charger, it might say you're going to do it in 20 minutes, but if there are other people using it or the charge is just simply not up to its 150 or 225, whatever it is you're on, um, then you're not going to get the full bang for your buck. And as you can see on some of the B-roll that we shot, at some points, you know, we were dipping right below 100 at some point. So you need to bear that in mind. Um, but as I say, if you've got a home charging unit, then it's probably something that, you know, you should invest in when you buy an electric car. So after all said and done, 
we were in the BP station for around about 25 minutes and managed to get around about 55%. So we went from 30 to 85% charge. That's 55%, which isn't bad. Um, that gave us a range of around 260 miles. And I think for the sake of having a cup of coffee and sitting having a chat together, you know, it whizzed by, to be honest with you. And at that point, I was quite happy, you know, with the with the end result from the car. Um, so there you go. You can charge out on the road, but I will remind you, it does cost quite a lot of money. So just bear that in mind. I ended up spending for that 55%. Uh, it cost me 35 UK pounds. So I thought I'd better mention that as well. Um, Let's talk about the range because the overall range does depend on whether you go for the single motor, that's the rear wheel drive, or the twin motor, which is the all wheel drive, which is what we're driving now. Um, the single motor rear wheel drive will give you 338 miles of range, which is very good, extremely good, far better than most of its competitors. Obviously not quite as good as the Tesla, but you know, nonetheless, it's still excellent for a saloon car. Um, if you decide to go for the all wheel drive version of this car, which is what I'm driving now, um, you obviously lose a little bit um, in your range, which drops to around 320 miles. It's not a massive amount, um, but you obviously gain the power because you've got two motors and you will gain, you know, the all round grip that you get with this car. So you've got all, mo all wheel drive at the end of the day. So I think, you know, the, the options are there, the versatility is there, and I quite like the fact that you you can choose between the two you're not just set at one particular you know twin motor um, setup which is great uh, safety aids all beautiful in this car you know even entry-level car gets a decent amount of safety aids I wouldn't bother with the mirrors I've said that I think I would stick with standard mirrors because they too come with blind spot assistance as well as part of your entry-level car so at the end of the day you know comfortable superbly comfortable you've got an electronically adjusted seat here you've got that the vented seat at the front here it's just a nice position to be in it's a beautiful solid ride it's practical it's ticking the boxes for me. I like the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 6, definitely. So there you have it guys, the Hyundai Ioniq 6. What a car, what a fantastic car. I have really, really enjoyed reviewing this car over the last week and I've got to learn a lot about this car and all the extra bits and pieces that come with it as part of a day-to-day -day usage of an electric car. And at the end of the day, this car would definitely be in my top five test drives if I was in the market for an electric saloon car, family saloon car, because I think it ticks the boxes in all the directions. It's good looking, it's reasonably economical, it's practical, and at the end of the day, it's highly comfortable. And I think you can't get much better than that when you come to choosing the car. At the end of the day, the choice is yours and the proof is in the pudding. So get yourself down to a Hyundai showroom and give one of the Ioniq 6s a test drive and that will confirm it all. I can tell you now, you get a decent warranty with the Hyundai range. You will get five years unlimited mileage warranty with one of these cars. What's most important is getting a battery warranty with this car. Um, you get 100,000 miles or eight years, whichever comes. Don't forget, with all warranties, they can be transferred to a new owner if you decide to sell the car in the interim. So if you don't want to keep the car for more than two or three years, you want to sell it on, you can transfer all the warranties over. You get 12-year anti-perforation warranty, three-year paint warranty, and you will get five years worth of health checks with this car, free of charge. So once a year, you can have a full health check on this car, completely free of charge. And from the minute you drive one of these off the forecourt, you are covered by Hyundai's roadside assistant. So it all stacks up, guys. At the end of the day, get yourself down, give one a test drive. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. And if you've got any comments, stick them in the comment box down below. One of the team will get back to you. If you've bought one of these cars and you want to share an experience with us, then put your experience in the comment box as well, be it good or bad, because it's really good when people are watching these reviews and they can get a good value opinion from someone who actually probably owns one or has already test driven one. So it's well worth a comment in the box. And don't forget, if you want to subscribe, subscribe button there as well leave it unticked because you saw at the beginning we don't just do car reviews we do loads of other stuff and something might ping up and remind you that you know we're AJ's up to something different this car and watch what he's doing this week. But yes, the majority of our stuff is car reviews. So keep us there, keep us on the uncheck button and you will get those regular updates. I'm going to ask you one big favour and I'm going to return it with a favour. If you could give us a thumbs up, 
would really, really appreciate it. Not just me, the entire crew and the editing crew as well, because there's about seven of us put these videos together. We don't get a bonus, we don't get paid any extra, but we do get a pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors to say, job well done. If you thumbs up, that means you like what we did. So therefore, it warrants the thumbs up, and I'd really appreciate that. So, now, the return bit. You see, player, as you saw it in, it, well, we're not just a YouTube channel. Oh no, we are part of a massive magazine company that produces the Player Bookazine. It comes out on the frequency magazine. It's a hardback book, so they call it a bookazine. And you can get your hands on a copy of this, well, forever ongoing for free. Well, the online version. You can't actually have the, the, the physical book. Well, you can if you want to subscribe to it, but they're 100 UK pounds each. You get the exact equivalent online, completely free of charge, because you watch me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. And all you've got to do is head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. Hang on. Editor, bring it in for me, please. Hang on. Here it comes. There he is. Thank you. Now, you've got it down there. I'll leave it up for a few minutes. Head over there, and all you do is put your name in and your email. That is it. It's as simple as that. No credit cards no details, don't want to know your inside leg measurement, what dog you got and how many times you've been married. All I need to know is your name and your email. Then you can either look at that online, turn the pages, zoom in, you can do all sorts of stuff or you can download it and read it at your leisure. There you go. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review of the Hyundai Ioniq 6. I certainly have enjoyed spending a couple of weeks with this car, learning all about it. I'll catch you next week with hopefully something equally as nice and comfortable and fun to drive as this car. I'll catch you then, guys. Thanks for watching.